Hello, what is up you guys? It is Reese and today I'm sitting down podcast style again because I just wanted to sit and chat about all the little like spiritual habits I do and like the witchy things and just kind of an all-encompassing video dipping your toes into each of the things that I do because I get a lot of questions about them. I obviously show my vlogs on my Instagram stories and stuff and people have questions about like law of attraction, manifesting, crystals, and I just thought I would sit down and talk about them. I personally consider myself like only like an intermediate at these things if we're gonna rank levels because I'm still learning every day and I've just been into this like the past couple months. So I kind of wanted to use my like beginner-ish level to explain how I got started and explain to like other beginners like approaches to start all this stuff. So yeah, just wanted to sit down and chat and I'm excited because I have no script for this at all. I'm just gonna go off the top of my head. Zoe's sitting on this chair back here. So if you see movement in the corner, it's not a ghost, it is Zoe. I have my coffee right here in this beautiful Harry Potter mug. I am drinking out of a straw so that I don't mess up my lipstick. And like I said, I'm just gonna kind of go a little bit into each topic. And if you want me to make a whole video or a whole blog post expanding on a topic, definitely let me know in the comments because I will be down to do that. Okay, so let's get started. First thing I wanted to talk about was just like spirituality in general. And what is it? Is it religion? Like, do you have to do anything to start it? A, a lot of people get confused. I mean, everyone has different approaches to it, how it fits best into their lifestyle. For me personally, I don't follow a religion and I never have, and I don't think like spirituality and law of attraction is a religion. It is a part, it can be a part of religion and it can be used alongside religion or they can be separate from each other. It really is just the belief for me, this is my like description of it, the belief that there's energy in the world and you can use the energy and choose how you put your energy out to then receive energy. That's also like the basic premise of law of attraction, like attracts like. So if you put out good positive energy, you get good positive energy back, kind of like karma. And although it's like spirituality, there's also also a lot of science backing this up. Like I'm a realist, definitely have a very realistic point of view in life, but there's this whole like quantum physics background that actually proves that we are made of energy and then like energy attracts like. I know this can be like a lot, but basically just think of like karma as the basis of it, at least what I practice and believe. So with like the law of attraction, which I can also get into like manifesting type stuff, it's basically just about being the best version you can and putting out good energy into the universe and like truly believing in whatever it is you want to attract or manifest. And then the universe will provide you back with that as long as of course you actually truly believe in what you're doing. And then when it comes to like manifesting, it's also not just like the feelings and the thoughts like, I want a million dollars, I'm a millionaire. Like it's not just the thoughts you have to take the action to. That's where a lot of people get confused about manifesting is because they think, oh, I just am gonna think I'm a billionaire and feel like a billionaire and feel all this money around me. But manifesting the equation is thoughts, emotion, and then action. You need to take action with it. So when you have the thought that you like want something, maybe you want like a new boyfriend or girlfriend, maybe you want money, like I said, or a new job, you think it, you feel it, feel how it would feel to have it, to be that already, be that version of yourself and then do the actions that you would do if you already had that or do the actions that you know or think will get you there because once you start feeling it, you'll get inspired action it's called. If you're looking for a new job, maybe talk to this one friend that you know is in a field that you like and then they can lead you to a new contact and then you know it goes on and on and that's how you manifest it. It doesn't just like pop on your doorstep or in the mail. It manifests by you thinking, feeling, then taking the action. Okay, that was a lot right there for like the basis behind all of this. Basically, it's just energy, what you put out, you get back. And then when it comes to like specifically manifesting things, it's putting out the energy, but also putting out the action. Okay, so I realized I wanted to add a visual element to this to hopefully make it more understandable for you guys. So this is you, right? That's you. And we emit frequencies, we emit energies, like I was saying before. What you put out into the universe, you get back. So if you're looking to get all these good things, these happy, love, money, whatever high frequency things are, you can't wait for them to come to you. A lot of people think that until you get those things, then you'll be happy. So you're waiting to be happy. No, you have to send out the high vibes match your energy to these and then they will come to you. If you stay at a low vibe, if you stay pessimistic, then you're gonna attract all these negative things because whatever you put out into the universe, you get back, not the other way around. So hopefully that makes it more understandable. In order to get the good things, you have to raise your frequency. Next thing I wanted to discuss was crystals because I get questions all the time about crystals and I definitely think I'm gonna do like a whole separate video on this. Again, I am kind of like a beginner intermediate of my knowledge of crystals but I'm gonna share what I do know. So crystals, what are they besides pretty rocks that sit on your shelf? Well, first of all, they're exactly that. They're just 
pretty rocks. <laughs> but why do all these like spiritual witchy people have just a bunch of crystals? Like why is everyone obsessed with crystals? Basically, like I was talking about, everything is made up of energy, humans, objects, and crystals. And these babies right here hold a lot of energy. The analogy I like is, you know, like a microchip holds a bunch of information and storage for computers and data and whatnot. Crystals are basically like microchips, but of energy, not like data, like we know it scientifically, but they're kind of just like an SD card of a bunch of energy. That's again, my personal analogy. So yeah, that's basically what they are. They help you attract energy, cleanse your energy around you, protect from certain energies. Each crystal has like a different meaning or purpose. The way I learn about them is one, my pop-up actually collects crystals. So majority of them that I own, I'd say maybe like 75% of them, he's given them to me and explained them to me. So I do have a little bit of like a leg up on that, but also just Googling, like Googling crystals, seeing ones that you find pretty, like if any of them I'm holding up now, you're like, oh, okay, you like this orange one so you google orange crystal figure out what it is and then see if you like the properties of it pinterest is also my number one resource when it comes to learning about all of this type of stuff whether it be like spirituality or crystals or tarot or whatever so if you're looking to get into crystals and wondering which ones to specifically get the first thing is i suggest is just go into a crystal shop or look online and just see which ones you're drawn to see which ones you like whether just because their color or their shape like do you like the little tower ones do you like the ones that are smooth like this do you like the purple one like see which ones you're drawn to and then go ahead and research them and see maybe why you're drawn to them. Maybe they're aligning with a certain part of your life and you don't have to get any specific type. It's just whatever ones you want or whatever ones, like I said, I'm gifted a lot of them. So whatever ones you're given. But if you are looking for specific suggestions and you want to go out and buy one, the first one I definitely suggest you have in your collection is clear quartz. It's basically like the most neutral of crystals, helps with any intention that you really set around it. Kind of like a clean slate. I pulled up the properties on Pinterest so I can give you like a proper description, but it is the most healing of stones, amplifies, restores, releases, and stores energy. Helps us see things more clearly, helps to clear mental blocks, improves focus. Great stone to meditate with when needing clarity. Comes in a bunch of different shapes. Crystals come in all different shapes like this one. I love this one. This one's pretty. It can come like this or you can get massive ones like this guy right here. This is a massive, I think this is the biggest crystal I have. So yeah, clear quartz, like I said, is like the most neutral and great for like any purpose that you want. Kind of all quartz as well. Like this is a rose quartz and rose quartz can help with love, relationships, even if it's like romantic or platonic. Rose quartz is just a good like loving stone. Amethyst, another really good beginner stone, and it's probably one you recognize. Amethyst is really good for relaxation, relieving anxiety, or any like mental stress. Good for sleep, if you like put it under your pillow, can help you sleep better, or even have good dreams. And again, also it helps with like clarity and can use with meditation and stuff. This is a good one if you have like a lot of anxiety. <laughs> a few more I'm gonna just talk about real quick. Any black stone or super dark stone is really good for grounding. So grounding is basically like connecting yourself more to the earth if you feel very scatterbrained or if you just feel all over the place. Black stones, this one is black tourmaline, it's called. I like to use this when I just really need to feel grounded, like centered. Selenite, I love this guy, it's like a tower. Very similar looking to clear quartz, so you might get them confused, but this is a very um, clearing crystal. Like I will use this to like cleanse myself. <laughs> very good, just like clearing away bad energy. And again, a clear crystal or the white ones are very good for just like, they're like, they're like clean, they're pure. They're good for setting whatever intention that you want. And then my personal favorite crystal, this is called citrine, which which is fitting because it's like orange. I don't know why I'm just so attracted to citrine like out of all my crystals. I don't, I don't know why this one I just like the best. And this one is used for manifesting. I think that's why I like it. I looked up this definition too, but good for drawing in prosperity, abundance, helps develop a more positive mindset and self-confidence. I like this guy. This one's my favorite. I use this almost every time I meditate. All right, so that's like the little crystal section. Where to get crystals? So I get a lot of questions about that too. So like I said, probably like half of them are gifted to me, but if I did want to go out and buy one, if you just literally Google crystal shop near me, you'll probably find one. I'm in like the suburbs and there's like a whole hippie shop in my mall actually. It's called East Meets West. So hard to say, but I, that might be a chain that might be near you. I'm not really sure. But if you just literally Google crystal shop near me, I know I can find an actual like whole shop that's like 30 minutes away from me, or you can also order them online. Next thing we got is tarot cards. So these are probably like the most recent addition to my little journey here and they're really fun. So tarot cards, I know these things are like fascinating to people. You probably see like card pools on TikTok or Instagram or whatever. But if you're looking to get into them yourself, then let's discuss. So basically how I got introduced to tarot cards is I just started watching like tarot card pools on YouTube. There's so many people on YouTube that do them for you, whether it be just like randomly pick a card or you can go in and look up your zodiac sign and it'll be like, 
card reading for Gemini. There's some people that literally do them on a daily, weekly basis. So for a good couple months, I was just watching like weekly tarot card readings for whatever my zodiac sign is. And then after watching those videos for a while, I just got used to like a lot of the cards and started to learn their meanings because you're watching them all the time. And I was like, I wanna do this myself. So I literally just ordered a deck off Amazon. I probably won't promote Amazon, maybe get them from like a local store or something, support a small business instead of Amazon. <laughs> and then really once you get it, you just start playing around with it, pulling random cards, asking random cards, questions and you obviously aren't going to know the meaning of every single card when you first get it but just by playing with it and asking like fun or just like randomly pulling a card out and then looking up the definition just to learn them like doing one card a day really helps you learn them more and again pinterest is a great resource for this like looking up certain spreads you can do looking up certain questions you can ask and then tarot cards are split into five sections there's the major arcana which is like all the face cards or something like this the sun and then there's four different like symbols, cups, wands, swords, and pentacles. And then each of those different symbols have like different meanings around them. I'm not gonna go into crazy explanation because this will take a long time, but I'm no expert on them, obviously, like I'm still learning, but that's the whole process of learning them is just using them, pulling them, looking them up, researching it on Pinterest. My favorite resource that I go and look up all the definitions of the cards is called biddytarot.com. And then there's a section where she literally breaks down every single card. So every time I do a card pool and like I said, some of them I'm like, I recognize now and know the meanings of, but if I get a card that I don't really know the meaning of it, I just go to the biddytarot.com, look it up, and then now you have new knowledge of a card in your head. And you don't wanna like go through and study them like flashcards and try to memorize the meaning. It's all about like intuition, pulling a card for fun or pulling because you have like a specific question or you want clarity. And then first look at it, study it, see what you see, see the different symbols. Like they all have designs and every single aspect means something, the colors, how they're looking, what they're holding, what they're wearing, like everything has meaning to it. So just kind of interpret it on your own first, see what you think you feel out of it, and then go ahead and look up the definition. And after doing it for a few weeks, few months, then you get good at it. Practice, practice, practice. If you're wondering how to pick a card, you can literally just like fan them out and pick one. You can lay them out across a table and pick one, just like kind of feel where your hand is like stopping and wants you to grab. You can learn to shuffle, which took a while for me, but if you shuffle like this, one of them eventually like pops out. Like one of them will usually just like spring out and I'll use that as my card. And then you also don't have to use a card that feels like it does not resonate with you at all. If you're like, this does not apply to me at all. I mean, there's a difference between denying that it applies to you. If something feels like it doesn't apply to you, then you just pull a new one. It's all about just like working with it and trusting your intuition. All right, I feel like I'm a bit into this video. What did we cover? We covered law of attraction, manifesting, crystals, tarot. I guess the last three habits that I do, which kind of tie into all this, is yoga, meditation, and journaling. I do have a whole video on them like separately, explaining why I do them, how I do them, how you can get started as well. So I will link that in whatever corner it goes in. But basically those habits are just, again, about maintaining your energy, cultivating good vibes. I do yoga meditation every day to calm me, make sure that I'm grounded, to just clear my head, allow myself space to think or like not just jump into the day or into life feeling off or unbalanced. And journaling, I'm definitely making a whole entire video on that. I do have an entire blog post on that though. So if you wanna learn more about what I journal about, go to the blog post, but I'm also gonna make a video on it because I need to explain it more. So yeah, okay, that was a lot. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you do want me to go more specifically into any of these, let me know. I can write detailed blog posts or make more videos on them. But hopefully they give you a good understanding if you're a beginner just looking to get into all this stuff or even if you're not, just something fun to watch. It is, again, what you make it. There's no rules. There's no laws. There, you don't have to do anything specifically. Like I said, a lot of this stuff is just personal to how I do it. Can be different from other people. It's just about trusting what works for you and your energy and your lifestyle. And it's about having fun. It's about having fun. Making the universe work for you. Working in correspondence with the universe because if you're putting out the good energy, it's gonna give it to you back. Okay, that is enough talking. I talked for way too long. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you all have a wonderful day or night wherever you are and make sure that you stay tuned until my next video. Peace.